As you recall in the previous training video, I introduced you to some simple basic formulas. For example, here I've got a cell selected F13. And if you look at the value within that cell, is it the result of me doing some simple data entry or that of a formula? The way to find out is to select the cell, click on it, and then come up here in the formula bar and, well, it looks like a formula. As opposed to me just coming down here and doing some simple data entry and typing in the number, selecting the cell, and up here in the formula bar it's just a mirror image or a copy of the data that I entered in that cell or the numbers, not a formula. So let me go ahead and hit the delete key. And what I want to introduce to you here, they're called functions. It's a level up or step up from formulas in that they can do more complex calculations. And as we go through later training videos, you'll see the complexity. In fact, you can get as complex as figuring out what your monthly payment is for a 30-year loan at, let's say, 5.5% interest rate. The two functions that I want to introduce to you in this training video are the sum and the average functions, just like they sound. Sum to sum up or add up a range of cells, and average to average a range of cells. Well, it's true in the previous training video, we already learned how to add a range of cells by, well, you can see here when I click on the cell up in the formula bar, we just typed in equals, then we typed in C7 plus C8, or we clicked on C7, then we hit plus C8. What I want to do is I want to come over here, click in the cell H7, and I want to be able to add up the range of each employee's sales from January through April. So to insert a function, there are many ways you can do it. One way is to go ahead and hit the equals key on the keyboard and just type in the name of the function. Go ahead and type in S. And as we learned in the previous training video, you get this drop-down list when you type in a letter after the equals symbol. So it brings up a list of all the functions. You can see that FX, that means that that is a function. And then it has the name of the function. We're looking for sum. So I can either keep typing U, M, and it brings it up right there. And then it gives me a little note that says what this function is all about. It adds all the numbers in a range of cells. Of course, we have to select that range, and we'll do that in just a second but I'm not finished. I actually have to do an open set of parentheses and then I can go ahead and type in the range or select the range of cells. But let me go ahead and hit the backspace a couple of times. That's one way is just to go ahead, if you haven't memorized, type in equals sum open parentheses and then type it in or you can go ahead and if it's selected down below you can either hit the tab key, let me back up, let me use my arrow keys to go down, select it, hit the tab key or hit the backspace arrow couple of times or double click on the sum function and it will pull it up and be ready for you to go ahead and enter in your first number. Number one means the range of cells that you would like to go ahead and add up or sum up. And then you can see it's got a comma because it allows you to add up multiple ranges. So if I come over here after I have equal sum open parentheses I can click and drag and my range gets selected and notice over here it's got C7 colon F7 that colon means through. So it has the same row, doesn't it? 7 for C7 and 7 for F7, the same row, we're on 7. So it's taking me from C, column C, through F in the same row. So instead of having C7 plus D7 plus E7 and so on, it's just column C or C7 through F7. If I'm finished, I just have to hit enter on the keyboard. I don't have to actually close my parentheses because Excel will close them for me. Let me hit the backspace key, or I can continue on. So you can see right there, I've got the syntax. It's got the function, the name of it, sum, open parentheses, bold. This is the first range that I'm working on. Then it has a comma. When I hit the comma on the keyboard, it bolds the second number, or number two, or Excel saying, look, what's your second range? Go ahead and select another range. And then I can hit comma, and I can just go nuts. And what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and take the range here, add it to that range, add it to that range, give me the total sum of all the cells within those three ranges. I don't want to do that. So I'll hit the backspace key several times, and let's just focus on the first range. And then I can go ahead and hit enter. Now you can go ahead and, like I said, come up here, let me hit the delete key and equals and type in sum, and then hit the tab key if it's selected, and it pulls it up and then click and drag, or you can just type it in, and type it the same way that we just saw it a second ago. Again, it's, we want C7, shift, colon, through F7, and then go ahead and hit enter. So it's up to you which way is quicker, to go ahead and just pull up the function and use the prompts there, 
and go ahead and click and drag or do you have it memorized where you can just go ahead and just type out the function completely without using the prompts it's up to you now let's go ahead and see if this is truly adding up that range I mean you go ahead and click in the cell come up here click in the formula bar it has the range outlined so it's adding it up hit enter of course you can go ahead and click and drag and select the range and you can see down here on the stat bar sum is 56201 56201 now what's this little green triangle in the cell to find out click in the cell let me go ahead and click in it here you get that little yellow yield sign hover over it you get a drop down arrow click on it and it says hey your formula or this function is emitting adjacent cells adjacent to what well let me click off in a blank area adjacent to the formula I mean it got this range but what about that cell that's right next to it or adjacent to it are you okay with that I don't care about an empty cell but Excel doesn't know that so you can come in here click in the cell click on the drop down arrow and ignore the error now if you're getting a bunch of those little triangles and you're familiar with them and and you don't care about the adjacent cells you can actually come up here click on the files tab go down to options and turn this thing off click on formulas come down here where it says error checking and uncheck enable background error checking so that way it's not bringing up those little uh, green triangles you may want to keep it on because there may be other errors that you may be concerned with but for right now I'm not concerned with missing adjacent uh, cells you can also use the indicator color instead of fancy green you can make your uh, indicator more aesthetically pleasing to you choose another color in any case I'm gonna click cancel well that's one way to insert the sum function another way which is a lot faster is let me go ahead and click in the next cell because we want to add up the total for this employee here for January through April is to come up here on the home tab over to the editing group and up here you have that Greek symbol when you hover over it it says sum click on it and it shoots out a lasso in other words Excel's like I got it I know which range of cells you want to go ahead and add up and I'm like no you don't you're including the social security number come over here and hover over the corner till you get your pointer turning into arrows pointing in opposite directions here till you get your uh, white cross turning into arrows pointing in opposite directions here and you can click and drag that corner handle and push it in of course it's including this empty cell here so I'll hover over here till I can get a two-way arrow and if you're not good at using the mouse to get the arrows to click and drag this in notice that it's in column G over here in the formula G8 we want it to go back to F8 you can just go ahead and click in here hit the backspace key to delete G and type in F you can do lowercase f that's fine of course the moment you type in F Excel's like hey you want some functions that begin with the letter F no that's annoying I'll just ignore it and then go ahead and hit enter and it brings it up of course you get that little flag there when you click on it click on the yield drop down arrow and it says hey you're emitting an adjacent cell you're like okay ignore it in any case you can select the range 857 is the sum 857 down below it matches so like I said that's the quicker way just go ahead and click in the cell come up here click on that Greek symbol for sum you can click on the drop down arrow it's right there you can click on it as well or you can come over here on the formulas tab in the function library group and there it is again auto sum or click on the drop down arrow sum either way click on that it shoots out a range and notice instead of shooting it out to the left it shoots it up to the top Excel is trying to use some logic here saying hey I don't have just one cell above me that has some numbers in it I have two so let me go ahead and select that I bet you want to go ahead and add up the range above I'm like no just quickly come over here click and drag and select it hit enter and you're done and again if you click back in here you'll notice up in the formula bar it's sum C9 through F9 or that range C9 through F9 to me that's a lot faster if I have to quickly add up a, a range of consecutive cells I mean if a range is a cell here cell there cell there forget it this isn't really the way to go to use the auto sum feature let me go ahead and click on the home tab finally the last way to insert a function and the one way that I think as you go on and learn more complex functions is probably the way you're going to be using more often than not having said that do you recall when you hit the equals key on the keyboard and you type in the first letter and you get these little icons here FX it means it's a function let me go ahead and hit the escape key once hit it again to get out of the cell or it's not being edit mode FX you come up here in the formula bar and look there's FX there and it says when you hover over it insert function click on it it brings up the insert function window you can do it from there let me close out 
or come on the formulas tab and click on insert function it brings it up or you can click on the drop down arrow and go for more functions I mean wow there's more than one way to bring up the insert function window you choose the way that works best for you let me go ahead and click and drag the header bar up and explain it do you want to search for a function if you want to search for a function just go ahead and hit the delete key and type in the name of the function you're searching for some I know it's down here but let's pretend we're searching for it type it in and click go and it brings up all those well that have at least some in it or relate to the sum function once I see it I can go ahead and either double click on it or select it and click OK click cancel let's try it one more time insert function if you don't want to go ahead and type it in and click go you can click on the drop down arrow and say I want a list of the most recently used functions and sums right there that's easy or click on the drop down list and say I think the function is something statistical or financial and it's all alphabetized sorted here we go down to the S's it's not there click cancel you can always come up here on the formulas tab in the function library and there's a list of groups there financial let's see it's sorted alphabetically I don't see some there in any case let's go ahead and click on insert function again if you can't figure out what group it's in either type it in here click go if you're not sure of the spelling click on the drop down arrow select all and it lists all the functions sorted alphabetically let's go down to the S's there it is select it and when I select it it gives you the syntax meaning the breakdown of the function well SUM and then you've got the first range the second range and it tells you what the function will do down below click okie dokie and it brings up the function arguments now here it's a bit more detailed and for right now it's probably overkill since we're just gonna go ahead and sum up a range I mean I like the quick auto sum feature as opposed to bringing this up but when it comes to more complex functions this is really helpful because again you get more details so you can be more precise if you need that extra guidance here for here it just has a simple description but up above it will actually give you a little bit more details of the data of what data to enter for example here the first range let me go ahead and click and drag the header bar down so I can see what we have selected here you can see it wants to select h7 through h9 well gosh there's h7 through h9 that's wrong so I can do one of several things I can either go ahead and say for the first range number one delete it and go ahead and type in the range which is well over here it's going to be C10 remember we want to go through so we use the colon shift and then hit the colon key through the range of F10 F10 can be lowercase so we're in the same row row 10 for column C through the columns to F in the same row 10 and you can see over to the right I get an immediate response where I can tell by looking at the numbers of the range 220.15 220.15, 195.37, 195.37. So already I can see by looking and comparing these numbers, I'm within the right range. So type it in, or you can go ahead and delete it and click on the collapse dialog box button. The operative word being collapse. When you click on it, it collapses the window so you can see more of your worksheet because you know these things can, can get in the way. Click and drag the header bar down, and then you can go ahead and use your mouse and click and drag and select the range and then either hit the expandable button here to expand open the window that you just collapsed or let me collapse it again or if you like the shortcut key you can hit enter and it pops it open I prefer using the shortcut key enter let me click and drag this up above and then when you're finished just go ahead and click OK and you'll notice that it gives us the result of the range 851 now the OK button is highlighted anytime you see a button that's highlighted or has a halo around it in this case light blue it means that that button's active and all you have to do is hit the enter key on the keyboard instead of using your mouse to click OK if you hit enter and it's like using your mouse to click on the OK button and let's see if it checks out click and drag and select the range and come down here sum is 851 up here it's 851 you can come down here on the stat bar and right click you also get some other choices like what's the maximum number, the minimum number. If you want to be able to see if you're on over type mode or cap locks or number locks, in any case, you can customize that. You can actually remove the sum. You can see it disappears if that annoys you, but I'm going to leave it up by checking it and click off in a blank area. 
Now having said that, you're not going to be able to check all your functions directly by comparing it against the range you selected like we do down here against the status bar because it's just using the simple formulas for the average range and sum and minimum and maximum, not all the functions and formulas. But hopefully this is helpful as you're beginning with Excel to be able to compare what you have up here down at the bottom to make sure you're doing it right. And then finally, this shouldn't come as any surprise, but we're going to go ahead and use the average function, which is along the same lines as the sum function. I mean, there's several ways you can insert the function. You can go ahead and click in the cell and type in equals a v. Start spelling the word average, and it brings a list down below. There's average. I can go ahead and arrow down and hit the tab key, and then I just go ahead and have to select the range or ranges. So the first range, if I want to add multiple ranges, just go ahead and click and drag. We're just going to do one range. So I'll go ahead and click and drag, select the range, and hit enter. And if I quickly want to outline the range that I just averaged up or summed up or any range that has a formula in it, just double click in the cell and it automatically selects the range. Like I said, if it's based upon a formula here, let me hit enter on the keyboard or come over here and double click. Selects the range or it puts me in edit mode. Let me hit enter, just like as if I would selecting the cell and coming up here and clicking in the formula bar, selects the range. Like I said, you have all those other options we talked about. You can either type it in or you can come up here on the formulas tab or just come up here and click on the FX insert function. We want to look for average. Let's go ahead and type in average and then hit enter. So it pulls up average and again, it's selected. You can read the description down below. Let's go ahead and click okie dokie. It says, okay, what's the first range that you want to average? Well, it wants to average the cell above it. Excel's not really helping out on this. I want it to average the range over to the left, so I can go ahead and hit the delete key, click on the collapse dialog box button, and then click and drag and select the range, hit enter to pop it back open, click OK, and there's my average for this range here. Of course, instead of continuing on and doing that, I've got a pattern here. I can go ahead and copy and paste the formula in those two cells or just hover over the lower right hand corner as we learned in the previous training video and use the autofill handle, the black cross. When you see the black cross, click and drag it down once, drag it down twice, and it automatically copies and pastes that formula, the average formula, for the, well, next two cells down below, and it updates the rows. In other words, we copied it and we auto-filled it down to this row. This row is row 9, so this formula, when we copied it down, up in the formula bar, shouldn't say row 8 or C8 through F8. It updated and went to the next row 9, and of course, updated and went to the next row 10. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, as soon as I upload a new video, you'll be notified instantly, and you can do that by coming over here and clicking on my face. You can also click here to support me, so for $2 a month, you can have access to over 2,700 training videos, all ad-free, and for a few bucks more, you can have access to my exercises, instructor notes, quizzes, certificate of completion, and a whole lot more.